This is going to be the first step where you actually start to solve the Rubik's Cube. What I would like to say first, before I go into moves to perform before you start to solve it, is how the cube is created, as well as how its structure performs, and uh, what you can actually do to your cube. Now, as you've just seen in the notation video, you were taught the six different sides that can be turned independently from the other ones. And there are three different kinds of pieces that you should know about. There are the six center pieces on each side. They are the pieces with only one color on them. That, that's, that color of that center piece d d uh, notates which color that whole side is going to be when the cube is solved. So this face is going to be the green face when the cube is solved. This one is going to be the orange face when the cube is solved. And as I said, the center pieces only have one color, and they never move in position to one another because of the way that the cube is actually built. If I take apart another cube that I have, I can show you the inner mechanism on how the cube works so that you can get a little better knowledge of how the cube turns. As you can see here, I have a yellow cube, but I have taken a few pieces out just to show you the inner mechanism. These are the center pieces that I was talking about. They only have one color, and they all spin around a center axis. As you can see there, the axis has six arms, one going to the up face, to the right, to the front, and then one going to the back, left, and down faces. So what that means is that you can turn each side around a centerpiece. But that also means that you cannot move this piece in, in, uh, in, uh, revel, in, uh, bleh. sorry about that. You cannot move this piece to a different position on the cube without changing the position of the two pieces next to it, the two center pieces. So the green will always be under orange and to the left, to under black and to the left of orange. Black happens to be white on this cube. So if I take a look on this cube, I have green here, but orange is on the top. So that means that if I turn it like this, the green, the green, orange and orange, which means the top layer will be white. Now what that means is that each face must be that color of the centerpiece, because there is no way to move the centerpieces to a different part of the cube. Even if you turn it like this, green is still on the right of orange and below white. So that is how the cube works. Now, these pieces. This is an edge piece, because it only has two colors. As you can see on a normal cube, there are 12 edge pieces connecting two different arms of the core. Four on the top layer, four on the bottom layer, and then four in the middle layer. Which means the number of colors on each piece notates how many moves that you can do to turn a specific piece. So an edge piece, since it has two colors, I'll take this one for example, there's only two moves that you can do that will move this piece. In this case, you can only do the up face, see how the piece moves, and you can do the front face, the piece will move. But if you do any other move, that piece will always stay there. Now, you can apply that same idea to the corner pieces. There are only eight of these on a cube, four on the top layer, and four on the bottom layer. Since there are three different colors, that means there are only three moves that you can do that will turn that piece. So if I'm looking at this corner, the yellow, green, red, all I can do is the up face to turn that corner, the right face to turn that corner, and the front face to turn that corner. You can't do the left, that won't move the corner, back and down won't. So there's only three faces that can turn that piece. So now I will move on to the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube 3x3. With all of that being said, I would just like to point out that I will have my mini cube in the background here so that you can see what step we're on in case you forget. Or you want to know what the finished product will look like. As you can see here, there's a cross created. And the pieces as part of the cross will match up 
here. Orange, orange, white, white. Here and here. This is a solved cross. So now, on the Rubik's Cube 3x3, you want to create the exact same thing. What you want to do is move the edge pieces around with the color you start with. I would recommend starting with the same color every solve and putting it into its correct spot. So this piece is in its correct spot. So what you want to do is I'm going to solve the cross on the top of the cube for visibility. What you want to do is find an edge piece, two colors, with white on it on the bottom layer. I have one right here. And since white is on the bottom, this one's going to be pretty easy to put in. The first step you want to do is move the piece below where it goes. So, white and red goes between the white and red centerpieces. So this piece, when put in its correct position, will be here. So I move the piece on the down layer under to where it goes. And now that it's under where it goes, if it matches it up with the correct centerpiece, then all you need to do is turn the face that that piece is on twice. And now it's in the correct spot. But what happens if it doesn't match up? I'll try to get to one of those. Here we go. The white and green piece is under where it's supposed to go, between the white and green centers. But if you turn that face twice, it doesn't match up on both the sides, like these ones do. So that means that you have to do a little changing of how you position the piece. Since your goal here is to match up this green with this green, and then matching up the two whites, all you have to do is move the piece to the right side of the cube, so now it's right here, the, pe the place where it goes is here, and turn the right side, or do an R move. And as you can see, it matched this up. Yes, it did mess up our other piece of the cross here, but that doesn't matter because we can easily put it back. Now that our piece is connected with the green face, all we have to do is match up the whites. Now this is correct. But what about this piece? This piece is still connected in the back. So after you do that move to turn a mismatched piece here up to the top, be sure to bring your right layer back. That will keep this one created and match this one up as well. So you just do that on all four of the pieces to create your top cross. Now my last one is right here. Match it up under where it needs to go. And in this case it matches up here. So all I need to do is turn the face twice. And I've got my top cross solved. Don't worry about the corners yet. That will be in the next step of the video. So now your question may be, what happens if my piece is right here? It's not in the bottom layer, and it's not oriented correctly with the centerpiece. All you have to do is turn the face that it's on so the piece goes into the bottom layer, like this. Now you can perform what you need to do in order to get it up to here. In this case, you move it to the right, match up the blue like this by doing an R move, then match up this white with your white cross, and then bring your first layer back. Now the one last thing that I want to show you is if you have at least two arms of your cross solved but your piece is in here. All you have to do is still move the face that it's on down to the bottom but that messes up your cross here. So what you want to do is bring the face to the, the edge to the bottom by either doing right or front turns. Now turn the down layer until it is off the face with the edge piece you want to keep in its position and then just bring the edge piece back up. Now your piece is right here, and I can perform the moves necessary to bring it to the top cross. So, since it doesn't match up, I will show you one more time. Turn the down layer to the right, or a D move, because looking at the bottom, D. Now match up this orange with its orange centerpiece. Bring the white and match it up with the top. And now bring your last side back to recreate your cross. And there is the first step in solving a Rubik's Cube 3x3. You have your cross, and you have it matched up on all of the sides, as you can see in my model here. So now, if you will click on, if you will click on the, the annotation at the very bottom of the screen here, or in the, the, in the description on the right side of this video, I will show you the second step in solving the Rubik's Cube, which is inserting the corners into their correct position.